Warning, this video contains mature and really messed up themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Seriously, I had no idea what I was walking into here. Stop now, while you're ahead. Hello, and welcome back to Bit of Age. And today we're going to be playing Bucket Detective. Apparently it's a story about a writer who's trying to finish his novel and needs inspiration. So he decides to turn to a cult. And I really like his little footnotes here. Main character used bathroom about 20 times per day? Wow. That sounds like a problem. You, a 41 year old man, David Davids. Okay. You are writing book called Bucket Detective. Ah. Book is not good. I can make it better. Truthfully, you not care about write book. You not even like read books because reading gets headache from make think too hard. You are married to wife who's abusive. Really? By abusive, you mean she not do perverted sex whenever demanded. To get perverted sex, you approach girls in the street, and they not give it, and instead call you creep and pig. This is why you is writing Bucket Detective. Famous book make it impossible for girls to resist sex, especially classes girls at nearby community college. At dinner with friend of yours who have recent success in business, you say, writing book is hard. Is there not an easy way to write great book? Friend of yours smile with mischief and says, yes, yes there is. He hand you card with address and say, go here and do what ask of you. In exchange, you will get what is desired. And if you not like, you leave any time. You not think more than one second to decide this is plain because it's much simpler to create good words on empty page. So, one cold and rainy morning, you arrive at address and enter front door. Um... Arrive... Okay... Can I just say that this is the worst reason to write a novel? This guy, I already don't like who I am. No. This guy's a dick. A huge dick. In fact, if he dies in the process of this, I'm not gonna feel bad. Not even a little bit. Okay. I'll play. Hi. My name is Gwen Sleepless. Hi, Gwen. I'm a 23-year-old white male, and I'm the building's maintenance man, cook, and I also clean the toilets. Okay. I thought it would be nice if once the Dark Lord is reborn to bring in 10,000 years of terror, if people could visit the place where it all began. Kind of like a museum to the origin of their torment. Really? So I've installed these boxes, which I call Gwen boxes, all over the building to explain the significance of different areas. Obviously, since the Dark Lord Mishriel, the Seven-Tongued Slayer of Kings, the Roaster of the Innocent, the Defiler of the Damned has yet to rise, these Gwen boxes are kind of a work in progress. Well, you're doing a good job, Gwen. And I admire your enthusiasm and desire to create a memorial for the great evil to come. Bathroom. Hello? Need to use the loo? Hello? Let me use the bathroom! This is like my mama all over again. No one ever answers the door. Why? Dick. Ugh. I'll just pretend I didn't see that. This? Beth, you don't have to come home. You don't have to do anything you don't want. But please, let your brother and me know that you're safe and getting our letters. Please, please, please. All is forgiven. All is forgotten. With unending love, Mom. Gwen, please respond to this as Beth, of course, before we get unexpected visitors. Cyrus. Oh. So Gwen's got a family that wants him to return. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. 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 Ah! Hello? One? Okay, screw you two. Two? Nobody there? This is cool. It's a shrine to the female reproductive system. Look how tiny his arms are. Oh, okay, this place is starting to creep me out. Four. Six, five, wait, didn't I have a dial? Three, five, nine. Okay, I'm gonna take a guess here. Let's say that these doors are like dials, so. 
Ah, I knew it. Okay, five, nine. There, three, five, nine. Secret door and quivering plants. Hmm, ugly. You know, I can understand the artwork behind this one in the fact that it's ugly. It's not ugly. Everything's ugly. So. Can I go back now? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. This game's darker than I thought it was going to be. Oh no. Bucket Detective by David Davis. Page one, paragraph one, line one. Main character introduced. He awoke with fear and a gun in his hand. On the road to, am I writing the book here? What, how do I know? Let's go Los Hagos. What's gonna happen to my finger? <laughs> Oh. oh! Oh no! Is that really okay? I honestly think you should probably bandage that up, but you seem to be doing okay there, dude. I did feel like I did say that I didn't care too much if you died, but I didn't think it would lead to this. The Journal of Gwen Sleeveless. My journal pages keep falling out and making me lose them. I guess that's what happens when you buy a used journal that is basically rotting. I'm poor. <laughs> yeah, do I? Yeah, I don't need that. I don't want to keep it. Alright, alright. Let's just get this over with. The father's office. These are the offices of the two fathers, Dr. Z.W. Francis and Jedediah Holcomb, who were the founders and leaders of our happy little... <laughs> I almost said cult, but it's a religion. There is a difference. The fathers believed that they were in fact one being that had been divided into two bodies for fear that if one being had so much knowledge, power, and sexual charisma, the universe would be torn into shreds. So to keep that great power separated, the fathers worked without ever meeting face to face or speaking aloud to one another. Instead, they communicated by passing letters through the mail slot between their offices. It was in this way that they laid down the laws of Mishriel, the god among gods, the gimp in the graveyard, the pus of Xanadu. Gimp in the graveyard. Let's go hold Okay. Find out what Jedediah is Jedediah Holcomb known as the okay. mystic, was a hypnotist, psychologist, poet, meditation guru, and expert on world religions. His most significant work was the unification of all major religious texts to place the Dark Lord himself at the center. Yes, everyone from Jesus Christ to the Buddha were in fact pawns of Mishriel, the breather of bile, the decapitator of slaves, the withholder of orgasms. <laughs> By the Father's decree, when this document is stamped and submitted, thus begins the final phase of Mishriel's rebirth. Okay, let's stamp it. I approve this document. Let us bring back the great God of Destruction! Alright, whatever. Apparently, I, I must be my missing finger. I've got buttery fingers and I can't carry it outside and around the office because yeah dr. Z.W. Francis known as the scholar was a mathematician physicist biologist inventor painter and most importantly a medical doctor specializing in the female reproductive system he was the first physician to do a deep 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 study of the female body from a medical huh? perspective of course and had the fools in the medical establishment not misinterpreted his work and taken away his license to practice medicine, the writings and tools he developed would be the cornerstone of modern gynecology. Guess we're stamping this piece of paper as well. What is that supposed to be? All right, let's put this back. Requests to Lord Mishriel in exchange for service, Cyrus Billman, harem of 9,999 virgin girls aged... What? Okay, there's got to be a certain point 
when it's just not okay, even for people this messed up. Seriously. Uh, new edition. Wants the inspiration motivation necessary to finish his novel, Fuck a Detective. It's surprisingly bad and make it a bestseller. David Davids. Okay, so apparently I'm not the only person to have volunteered my services to Lord Mishriel. So I can only assume that this is not going to end well because why didn't all these guys succeed? And why is the only person that left notes here named Glenn? Gwen Sleeveless, he really, should he really be included? Please make people want to be my friend without me begging them. He just wants friends. I'll be his friend. So that's why he wants to bring back the Dark Lord. He wants friendship. I don't like the main character, but I think I like Gwen just a little bit. Receive the truth from the two fathers. Truth? Oh, huh? Hey! Do, 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 do. I've sacrificed my finger for Lord Mishriel. Oh, what's in here? Huh? Okay. On February 18th, the fathers delivered their seed to the holy female vessel and then died of simultaneous heart attacks. Their bodies were cremated and their ashes preserved in urns while their souls were released into the building so that upon the Dark Lord's rebirth, they would be one with Mishriel, the putrid prince, the horn of Babel, the apple among the corn. <clears throat> I'm just going to put this back down. <laughs> Can I smash the urn? That'd be great. Yeah. Where's the other one? Let's just... Hey, whoa. Hey, whoa. What is... What is this? Whoa, I, I can't move them. So the urns are doing some kind of weird electromagnetic thing. I'm not sure why or what. Oh, okay. With the rebirth of the Dark Lord soon to come, fathers needed to be certain which of their followers were true believers, so they constructed a challenge called the Believer's Waltz. The fathers then sat in the chairs on this stage and telepathically delivered the precise steps required to complete the waltz. Those who completed the waltz were to be blessed with the gifts of the Dark Lord, while those who could not were locked away to die. Okay, so I gotta do some kind of dance thing? I wonder what happens if I... One, two, three, peek a -boo! Oh! I'll put you back right on there. There we go. Hmm? What's this? Pray? I pray to you, oh holy lords of what's it? What are we doing here? Ba boop beep boop bop. No? Good. 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 I have. No idea what I'm doing. Okay. Great. What did I do? I don't know what I did, but I did it. Apparently, I'm brilliant. I knew it. Okay. Hey, button. Da 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 da. Now what? Meh. Meh. This is actually really entertaining. It shouldn't be. But I'm having way more fun following these arrows than I probably should. That was actually really cool. I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. Do we have cages here? Gwen was here? Aww. Okay. That's, um... I have a bad feeling about how this is going to end. And I feel really bad for Gwen. September 1st. So excited because today I finally get to do the Believer's Waltz. Cyrus warned me against doing it because I wasn't at the ceremony, but I'm not worried because I know that I am a true-born believer. 
and will be able to complete the waltz. I can't wait to make the fathers, may they rest in peace, be so proud. January 18th. Today the fathers let me out to visit the library. Since I'm an orphan, I was curious to research my family history. It turns out my family name, Sleeveless, came about because my ancestor from 400 years ago was the only guy in his village to wear shirts without sleeves. He cut off his sleeves to show his arms for some reason. Maybe they were muscular. This was very uncommon at the time and he was eventually burned alive for the practice. Crazy! August 31st, haha, <laughs> my journal is terrible, seriously, like none of my pages are staying inside. Is this where he slept? It is. I wasn't sure if I'd do this, but I thought visitors might want to know more about me, their humble guide, Gwen Sleeveless. So let's see. My parents died when I was two. I was sexually abused by the man who ran my orphanage, and I used to burn my face with cigarettes to get attention. Pretty standard stuff. I was 14 when I ran away, and 18 when the fathers took me in and gave me this bed, which they graciously placed under a leaky pipe to strengthen my mental strength, which they said I had none of. When I'm not cleaning toilets, I write songs about the fathers, I draw pictures of the fathers, and I pray to the fathers. As you can tell, I'm a pretty lucky guy. I... I really... I feel bad for Gwen. Couldn't we find some dead guy and put his hand in there? Screw it. The character we're playing is an asshole anyway, so we might as well get it over with. He can be stuck. Why would you put your other hand in there? Stick the hand you are already missing the finger up. I'm just gonna go with number two. I mean, it's already dark. We're losing our hand, right? Yeah, that's perfectly normal. I'm sure it'll heal. You'll be fine. Nothing will happen. You'll just walk it off. Sure. Beth seemed super nice, but when I brought her food today, she started crying and told me she was being held against her will. That the fathers had drugged her and raped her and had ordered Cyrus to steal her child after birth. I explained to her that the sins of the world had corrupted her mind and she is lucky it is so close to the child's birth so that Mishriel can be reborn to cleanse the filth from the streets and also from her mind. She didn't seem happy with my response. Ha ha. Okay. It's starting to get dark now. Fathers gave their seed to the woman with a pure heart, and seven months later the genderless child was born. And on that day the Chosen One arrived and delivered the child to Mishriel, the father of the motherless, the leper among the clean, the jester of Gallipoli, so that he, the Dark Lord, would be reborn. The Gospel of John is interpreted by Jedediah Holcomb. I don't know what I was expecting when I read that it had to deal with a dark ritual for a satanic cult in order to finish a novel. Baby was just given birth. Um, <sighs> I 
Can I walk out of here? Can I leave? Is that a choice? I am so sorry. Little, little Bobby. Don't worry, little Bobby. I'm, I'm sure it'll be okay. I don't think anything too bad is gonna happen. I mean, people are still alive, right? I might be missing a finger and an entire hand and... Back where I started? I can leave. Please tell me I can leave. Can I leave with the baby? <laughs> no, let's go. With baby in hand, you stumble into street and pass to unconscious. You wake up in hospital with caring wife inside, and her smile makes you feel annoyed. Hospital people heal you and give you wooden finger, arm, and legs, and return you home. Wife is so desperate for love, she not ask where baby come from, but keep it and raise it his own. Okay. At first, you think baby cute, but now it only eat and scream and poop, and you regret and take with you. Friend of yours that tell you about the house is much angry. Say, you ruined everything. You say that followers of Mishra is broken up, and few that remain now selling t-shirts at mall. Your life not much good either. Basically just watch TV game shows and touch fiddlestick with wife out buying groceries. You consider to divorce wife, but then you must buy own groceries, which seem like major hassle. <sighs> Baby grow up handsome and with much charisma, but with eyes of unfathomable darkness. By age of 17, Baby have many devout followers, which start you worried because after save Baby, you're not much nice to it. Uh... For example, sometimes you forget Baby's name, which is considered impolite for dad due to child. There's multiple endings? Okay. I guess I'm coming back to this then. <laughs> right. Well, um... Was not expecting that. There's multiple endings. So, I... Color me curious. I want to know. We're, we'll go see... In, We'll see how far this rabbit hole goes. I hate this game already. I hate it. I hate everything it stands for. I hate the whole concept. And I feel bad for Gwen. But I feel worse for what this baby's gonna go through. And as much of an asshole this guy is, I wouldn't want anybody to go through this. <laughs> What now? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh, well, I can't see my own legs, so they're saving me that. Yeah, they're saving me the, the terror of this headache. Okay, let's just, let's go through with it. Let's just do it. But now, I'm just gonna go. door and into street and all go black. Two days later, you awake in hospital with pain surge through body. After long recovery, you return home with wooden finger, arm, and legs, but still you use wheelchair because it feel like racing game. When finally continue writing Bucket Detective, words flow out of you like water out of an upside down cup. Within short time, book is finished and published and on many best book lists and selling like millions. With much success, you finally get in young girls you've been want. Some even much too young, if you catch my meaning, but morality have never been your favorite subject. Wife, she cared for you whole time of recovery, but now best kick her out to make room for new girls. Meanwhile, 
major cities go up in flames, and the dark force take over the world. Many are dying, many are infected with disease and psychosis and put into slavery, but you is not so interested. All you care do is roll in chair and make penis spin with pretty girls. Life is good. Life is good. I like my first ending better. I think that was far, far better. That's all the time that I have for this episode.